When I uh, started with Alzheimer's research 30 years ago, I had a background as to work as a clinical doctor and doing research on the patients I worked with that was a rare inherited disorder named acute intermittent porphyria. And starting with Alzheimer's disease, I had a good background working with families with the disease and also working with both biochemistry and genetics. And very rapidly we found what was by the American named the Swedish mutation, which has been very much uh, used in the field, especially in mouse model. And the Swedish mutation had a very strong pro uh, propensity to, to, to overproduce amyloid beta. And for me, already 30 years ago, it was very clear that that's, this is something that must be similar for both for all types of Alzheimer's disease as both clinical features and neuropathology is the same. Although the, the, these rare fam familial cases, they get the disease much earlier, often in the 50s, uh, as in the case with the Swedish mutation. So, so um, and at that time, being 30 years younger and more naive, I thought it would take like 10 years for us to develop effective treatments against a beta. That was more complicated than we believed at the time. And then some years later, uh, we found another f uh, family from northern Sweden and, and mutation in that family, and we, we named that the Arctic mutation as it was from that region of Sweden. And the Arctic uh, mutation has, has a very inter interesting feature. It formed large soluble aggregates that we named protofibrils. And I got the idea, and this was in 1999, that uh, there came a very famous paper from um, a small biotech company in San Francisco, Athena and Neuroscience, and they demonstrated how they could treat Alzheimer's mice with immunotherapy. And when I, I was very impressed by, by, by of that paper, and I thought we should do the same, but we should not target A beta in general. We should target a special form of A beta, these soluble aggregates, because my thinking was that the monomers can't be toxic, because we have them from, all people have them, all cells produce them, they can't be toxic, and the end stage, the fibers that we find in the plaques, they are probably f fairly inert. And then um, I, in my lab at Uppsala University, we managed to isolate a monoclonal antibody. We, uh, we named it MAB158. And that has antibody has those properties. So it, it has its strongest binding to the protofibrin very weak binding to monomers and 10 to 15 times weaker binding to fibrids. And that antibody, I, also, I should mention that uh, in 2003 I formed a company with a colleague that had experience from the pharmaceutical industry, from Pharmacia in Sweden. And, uh, I, I'm, I'm a typical medical researcher. I don't have that experience, you know, and I realized that there were, we needed some other competences here. So Per Gellerfors was his name, is his name, and, and we, we managed to make a deal with A-Side, the Japanese company, and MAB158 was humanized by the company we started, we named the company BioArctic after the mutation, and uh, the BioArctic humanized MAB158, so it was 
named BAN2401 and now Lekanemab. So Lekanemab is, we made a deal with ASI, the Japanese companies, and so they now uh, are conducting the clinical trials and we are now in phase three and we have data from a large phase two that looks very good and we hope that we can replicate those data um, in now in phase three and we will know in September this year we will have the data and if we can replicate phase two data I think we will have a new drug on the market so I, I'm, I'm very confident and hopeful.